it's been known for decades, or it's at least been theorized for decades, that children on the autism spectrum may have a specific deficit in their ability to integrate information, particularly between sight and sound. And uh, quite a number of groups over the years have looked at this uh, in small numbers of children, and the results have been mixed. You're going to see an image of a lady's face. So our study was the first study to really look at this in a very large cohort Brad. of children. So we have over 230 children in this study. Paste. And what that allowed us to do was to actually look in slices of time. Go. From six years of age all the way up to 18 Brad. years of age. And really look at the developmental trajectory of multisensory Born. speech integration processes. We studied children who were typically developing who are matched to high-functioning children on the autism spectrum. So these are children who meet criteria for an autism diagnosis, but they have, within normal limits intelligence, some of them even have superlative intelligence. Our paper was published in the journal Cerebral Cortex, and the basic findings were that in younger children on the spectrum, on the autistic spectrum, there's evidence for a severe multisensory integration deficit when it comes to extracting speech information out of noisy backgrounds. A deficit that ameliorates, somehow ameliorates, as these children enter into the teenage years. Okay. There are a couple of potentially major implications of this. One is the fact that it recovers in the teenage years, which is of course great news, to us suggests that whatever is broken can be fixed. And that wow. we think is extremely encouraging because if we can figure out ways in which we could deliver targeted therapies around multisensory speech integration, there's every possibility that we could teach children at five, six, maybe younger, to do this uh, uh, much better than they currently are on the spectrum. And who knows what might, might come along for the ride in that, in that regard. Uh, certainly one key aspect of multisensory speech integration is socializing. That's what we use it for. We use it to talk to other human beings and to interact in group circumstances. These are precisely the sort of circumstances that autistic children have real difficulties with. So if we could help them out with this fundamental ability, maybe we could impact their social abilities as well. One of the aspects of this study is that all the children at the various age groups are different children. It's what we call a cross-sectional design. And so if we're really going to understand what happens in this recovery phase, we need to follow children longitudinally. We need to pick them up early and we need to follow them through the lifespan, through the early development, and watch this change occur. And potentially also then use neuroimaging and electrophysiology to try to understand what's changing, fundamentally changing in their brain as they regain this or gain, gain for the first time this multisensory integration ability. In this study, we study what we call high-functioning autistic children. So these are children that meet every criteria for uh, autism, uh, but these are children who are of normal intelligence levels. Some of them are of superior intelligence levels. And clearly, in work like this, we really, we're really trying to impact the children who are most affected. So we need to work in, in lower functioning children on the spectrum to better understand what their multisensory integration abilities are.